Hey guys, welcome back to the next part in the turntable series. It's just two parts. This is the final part. Don't worry, we're not gonna have any more videos. This is just me showing you the very basics of After Effects so that you can, of course, create your own uh, video compositions for your uh, turntable. So, uh, let's go. By the way, uh, if you didn't check yesterday's video, you missed out on something very, very cool. We talked about a very quick sneak peek about the rigging course. We're releasing the rigging course very, very soon. And uh, I'm really proud of that one. We're finishing the last little couple of details and we need to make sure to make uh, to make sure that everything is working ri uh, right and perfect. So just keep in touch, make sure to like, subscribe, you know, the deal. So let's go. This is After Effects. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, this little tutorial in Considering that some of you might not have any sort of experience in After Effects, so I'm going to explain some of the things like very, very quickly, and then we'll uh, we'll just do the, the whole thing. So this is the interface. It's It can be a little bit intimidating at first, but it's not really that big of a deal. Right here is where we're going to be working on the videos, where we're going to see the previews. Down here is our timeline, where we're going to have our layers, all of the different... Uh, footage that we import right over here is where we're going to have the footage that we import and uh yeah so the way after effects works and it's very interesting is uh, similar to references in in maya it won't import the files into like a master file it will just reference the files from where they are and get them into a composition that we are going to be able to um export later on so i'm going to go file i'm going to say import file right here and i'm going to go into our images uh so this is the next to live images. You can see all of the renders that we've done so far. We've done a lot of projects, right? I've been enjoying it. So if we grab this one, as you can see here, we have the 119 frames of the snake lamp, the geo, where the geo rotates. And then I have the 120 frames where the light rotates. So I'm gonna select the first one of the geo and you can see that we get this import JPEG sequence. So very important, just hit import. And there we go, we have the sequence right here. You can double click it and you're gonna be able to preview it. And you can see how very nicely this thing turns around. Look at that, it's beautiful. It's very cool. The shadows, the noise, everything. It took a little while. I think it took about probably like six hours for all of the frames. It was about two or three minutes per frame. So that's about six hours for everything. Now, there's one little issue, very important. A lot of people miss this. When you import this, by default, After Effects will import this as a 30 frames per second composition. And we don't want that. So we're going to right click, interpret footage, main. I'm going to change the frame rate from 30 to 24 because that's the actual frame rate that we were using. I'm going to import now the other one. So I'm going to say import file. Let's look for the lights. You can actually select any one of the, of the. you don't have to select the first one. It will detect that it's a sequence because it has the dot zero zero and whatever number. Just import, same deal, interpret footage, main, and just change this to 24. Now, uh, again, we can preview this very quickly. Now there's a little bit of a difference here, it seems. What changed? Something changed, which shouldn't have changed. That's weird. Okay, so so something changed probably on the on the samples or something. You know what? I think remember the the ray tracing thing that I mentioned. So I forgot to change the ray tracing here, and and that's why the the glass is shining in a different way. Uh, but you can see that the positioning is exa exactly the same, which is what I want. Now I'm gonna create a new composition right here on this little button right here, and I'm gonna make this composition a 24 frames per second composition at. Uh, oh, let me delete that. Because this is the, the actual composition that we're going to do. So we know that uh, 120 frames are 5 seconds. And what I want to do is I want to have two uh, rotations on the on the geometry and then two rotations on the lights. So that means that that's going to be uh, 20 seconds total. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to say 20 frames. And here in the duration, I'm going to change it from uh, 30 to 20. And I'm going to hit OK. So now we have a, an empty composition. You can see this right here called uh, comp. Let's rename it. Let's call this master comp. And uh, right click and rename, that's it. And now the only thing we need to do, and it's super simple, I'm just gonna grab this guy and drag and drop it here into the layers. So now, as you can see here on the timeline, we have this little layer that goes from zero seconds to five seconds. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna control D to duplicate this, move this around until we get this guys right here. I'm using Alt and the little scroll wheel to zoom in and out so that we can perfectly match. So what I'm expecting here is that we're gonna have this very nice uh, transition from one of the duplicates to the other. So no, now we have two cycles, two full cycles, without actually having to uh, render all of them, right? Because it's, it's the same thing. We're not changing anything. Now I'm just going to grab this turntable lights, the, drag it down here, move it up. Same deal, just move this thing all the way to here. Oop, right there. And then Control D to duplicate and move this thing right here. 
And there we go. As you can see now, our full timeline is, is filled with uh, two copies of our rotation and two copies of our light rotation. Now, if you press a uh, number zero on your keypad, you're going to start something called a preview. And you're going to see this little green line uh, going up. Of course, this depends on your computer and how much uh, RAM you have. You can see uh, here my, my RAM is getting it's getting filled, which is fine. But it will allow me to see the whole um, the whole transition. Now, I'm, I'm a little bit angry at the fact that I forgot to turn on that little thing with the lights because it definitely gives me a little bit of a, of a different vibe there. Uh, I'm not sure what it was. I need to double check. Uh, but yeah, you can see like we have two perfect turns here and then it transitions as it stops here, bloop, it transitions into the light uh, setup so that we can see how this whole thing reacts to the light. Now, some of you might say, you know what? I mean, it's cool, but it's 20 seconds long. I, I don't want to, I don't want to watch a 20 second animation, even though it's cool. Uh, 20 seconds on a demo reel might be way, way too much. You, you want your demo reels to be like, boom, 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 directly to the, <laughs> to the cool things. So I'm going to show you a little trick here to, uh, time remap this thing and compress it into, let's say 12 seconds. We're going to remove eight seconds and it's going to go a little bit faster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of these guys. And I'm going to right click and select this option called uh, pre-compose. And what pre-compose will do, let's call this uh, turntables. It will compose or it will, uh, it will, um, it's, it's like grouping. We're grouping all of those uh, footages, all of those uh, frames into a single composition. That way we don't have to individually edit each one of those. We're just going to edit this whole layer. So it's a, it's a new layer. And if we ever need to go back to the layers like here, we just double click the turntables composition and we can individually change each one of this. This is one of the, like the secrets of how After Effects works because we are going to be using different sort of layers and different sorts of, uh, of uh, compositions to get the things that we want. So in this composition, I'm just going to right click, I'm going to say um, time, enable time remapping, we're going to get these two little crystals here, this one and this one, that's the limit of my time right now. And I'm just going to move this little crystal down to 12 seconds. And this little brown box all the way to 12 seconds as well. I'm going to match, make sure that they match perfectly. There we go. And what that's going to do is it will it will compress the time of the elements into that specific time. What's going to happen though is since since we used to have so many frames and now we have fewer frames, we're going to lose some frames, of course. So there might be a little bit of a jaggery effect here. Let's let's take a look. Now you can see that the lamp rotates a lot faster, and I expect that at six sec at six seconds we're going to switch into the light uh, movement. So now we have 12 seconds of animation that are looking very, very nice. Now, you can see that we're not actually seeing the, the animation at full resolution. That's because I have this option right here set to quarter. I think by default it's set to auto. But if you go all the way to full, you're going to be able to see the, the actual element at full resolution. So this is the actual way uh, in which uh, things are going to look. And uh, yeah, there we go. We have the video that all of the frames are running and we get to the very end. Now, to export this as a video, because right now this is just a composition, I'm going to move this thing down. This is the, the range slider, or it's not the range slider, what's the work area? I'm going to move the work area down here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say trim comp to work area. That way, my whole composition, instead of being 20 seconds long, it's only 12 seconds long now. Uh, by the way, you can do this in any other software. I personally like using After Effects because that's like the software that I've been using. That's the license I have. Uh, but I know that you can do like a Sony Vegas, uh, even Windows Movie Maker. Like there's a lot of ways in, you can, in which you can do this. It's just a, this is just a simple way. So I'm going to go into composition and I'm going to say add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. So the Adobe Media Encoder is one of the ways in which you can render the, the whole thing. I really like using Media Encoder because it has a lot of presets that you can modify. The default renderer that you have inside of After Effects, it's good, but uh, Media Encoder is better and it's included. Uh, by the way, for those of you that are um, looking to buy the Adobe Cloud system, um, I believe they're offering like a promotion right now. Quick tip, if you're a student or a teacher somewhere, you can get a, an education license with the .edu uh, email. Uh, that's the one I have. And uh, it's actually this one. Like I, I pay 400 pesos uh, each month, which is like 20 bucks. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to go to like uh, 1,000 pesos, which is like 50 bucks. You do get all of the, all of the, all of the uh, apps, like every single thing. Uh, there's one option, I think, where you can only get like the basic ones, but I have this one and it's it's great. And uh, I, I think there was a promotion. I, I saw a promotion a couple of days ago where they were offering like a 40 or 50%. So make sure to check it out using uh, this sort of software is always good. So now on the media encoder right here, you can see that uh, I can just click here on the preset and it's going to give me a preview of how this thing is going to uh, look at the end of the day. 
So let's just wait for this to connect to the project. There we go. And you can see it's going to render the work area. It's going to render at 1920 by 1080, which is full HD. It's going to render on an H.264 format, which is MP4. Very, very good, very uh, standard. It's only going to be 15 megabytes, which is perfect. If I want to, I can increase the VVR pass here to like, I don't know, like 13. It's going to make it a little bit heavier, but it's going to be smoother as well. Um, don't go crazy because you can see the, the weight goes like really, really high. So I think like 12 is going to be fine. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I'm just going to hit OK. And I'm going to change where I want this thing to be exported to. Normally, when I ex export things, I like to export them on the movies folder on my um, on my next to live in this case. So here in the next to live, I'm just going to create, I'm just going to call this a snake lamp. Hit OK. And then you just hit this little button here, play. And you're going to see that the render is, is uh, happening over here. Now, this one, it's only 15 seconds. So as you can see, it's going to be only a minute. So let's just wait a little bit for this to finish. And meanwhile, let me know, guys, how are you doing? Hopefully this uh, Sunday is a good, like, relaxing Sunday for you guys. Uh, hopefully you guys are taking a break from your work, spending time with your family, and uh, just enjoying life. Here in Mexico, uh, it's very uh, common to do... Um, what would be the right word? Barbecues. It's not a barbecue, but it's, uh, we call it carne asada. Carne asada. And we just uh, get together with the family and uh, get some steaks, lit up the fires, and cook them to our best, uh, to our preferences. So, yeah, this is media encoder. This is After Effects. After Effects is a really powerful software. I personally don't know how to use it to its full extent with like all of the post production stuff. If you remember, we talked about this before. There's like three phases, pre-production, production, and post-production generally in the in the 3D pipeline. My specialty is uh, pre-production and production, not so much not, not so much post-production. I have people uh, in my team and people I know that usually help me out with that kind of stuff. So there we go. Now I'm just clicking here to where it exported. We have our file here. And that's it. We have our very nice turntable. Uh, geometry turntable, and then um, after a couple of turns, we have the light turntable. It's very important that we include both of them, like the geometry and the light, because sometimes the geometry looks really good on certain lighting scenarios, but it doesn't look good in other lighting scenarios. So by moving the light around, you make sure that everything looks good on all possible scenarios. Uh, I would definitely like to fix the, the thing here. Now, you can definitely tell there's a little bit of sampling issues on the, on the lamp there. Uh, that the only way to avoid those is to increase the render time even higher or use a denoiser, uh, which I haven't used before. Maybe we should talk about denoiser in the next couple of weeks. I think that's a, that's a good tool for you to have. Uh, so the denoiser will allow us to get rid of some of that noise. I personally don't find it super like invasive. I actually think it looks kind of like the grain of film, which makes it look nice, as long as it's not super, super big. Um, but yeah, there we go. Let me know what you guys think about this small series. Let me know if you like this small series or if you prefer like the super big series that we do sometimes. Next week, starting tomorrow, we're going to start with an environment prop sculpture. And we're going to do base mesh, sculpt, textures, well, UVs, textures, and render. We're going to do this for game, okay? So I'm going to see if I can do like a stylized kind of approach. We haven't done stylized. I mean, we did stylized with the Aku Aku mask, and then we did realistic with this. Uh, so let's go back to a cartoon look, and then we'll, we'll just like alternate. Sounds good? And uh, yeah, keep in touch, guys. Make sure to leave your comments, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you back tomorrow. Bye-bye. And now I go back to OBS and close this.